The U.S. military was forced to retreat after a powerful volcanic eruption shook. The eruption on Iwo Jima has forced the U.S. Navy to relocate carrier landing practice, an unprecedented move. And the coming ripple effects could affect the entire Pacific and West Coast. Last time we seen Iwo Jima erupt, it was in 2023. But now, in September 2025, we can see the red underneath the ground billowing up this submarine underwater volcano exploding, raising urgent questions about the Pacific Ring of Fire. At the same time, the Bay Area is rattled by back-to-back -back earthquakes. And on September 22nd, Monterey, California installs new tsunami evacuation signs. So what does this mean for millions of you across the Pacific and West Coast? And what is the military doing currently with their training being evacuated? After the underwater volcano erupted in the Pacific, U.S. Navy pilots will relocate carrier landings at Marine Corps Air Station Iwakuni due to ongoing volcanic activity on Iwo Jima. Iwakuni is a very highly unusual field practice site according to Japan's Ministry of Defense. The military will be forced to train here from now all the way to September 26 because of the magma building up underneath the Pacific. But this relocation isn't by accident, but it happens to be where the mega quake warning zone and Kai Tro is. There is a large rupture that was just found this year off the coast right here. And if this thing has a mega thrust earthquake, they're expecting 298,000 fatalities. And this sits right on the ring of fire. So the U.S. Navy didn't just retreat to one of the more dangerous zones right next door to the volcanic eruption for no reason. Iwo Jima erupting and magma intrusion increasing is a sign that Pacific Ring of Fire pressure is building up because this isn't just smoke at Iwo Jima volcano. This is part of a pressure chain along the Ring of Fire. And that specifically could be something they're looking at pinpointing as they go and train off of one of the most dangerous zones. And a mega quake tsunami would disrupt the US West Coast, Alaska, British Columbia for months. The supply chains would be totally no shipping for a while. Economic impacts would be very much in disastrous stages. Hawaii would most likely get hit with tsunamis and then the waves would travel for miles all the way down to the U.S. West Coast. And right now, they don't know how far these waves would travel, but they can reach the U.S. West Coast. And even if they don't, we're in a situation where that Fukushima waste as well starts to travel even more, even though it's already hit our coastline. And if we map out the pressure right now along the Ring of Fire, all the way to the West Coast, back-to-back -back earthquake hit, Berkeley, California, and while media reported minor damage, some of the major damage reports went unnoticed. Lorraine Walker, a Berkeley, California resident house, split like this. The process of fixing my roof, look what the earthquake just did. This is not minor damage. Are we staring at the big one and a slow phase already happening? And why would Monterey, California, go ahead and start putting up evacuation tsunami warning signs and getting people ready for the routes. And some of the locals are completely oblivious to what's going on. When you listen to what they say, I don't think they even know what's coming. New tsunami signs are up across Monterey's waterfront as a part of a statewide push to standardize tsunami readiness. The city installed five signs, one at Fisherman's Wharf, two along Del Monte Beach, one at El Estero Park, and another at San Carlos Beach. The signs map out evacuation routes and explain what to do if a tsunami alert is issued. City leaders say the goal is to make the information easy to spot, but residents say the move feels unnecessary. We've only ever had one tsunami warning ever since we've been here, and that was, what, like maybe five feet. So I don't think, I don't think it was necessary. Emergency officials urge people to familiarize themselves with the routes now before an alert strikes. Now let's look at the bigger West Coast picture. Let's go up a little bit more. And you got the wake of tsunami warning. Oregon lawmakers calling for better state disaster preparedness. And they're looking for $300 million package 
for statewide disaster facilities. And then if we go up a little bit more from Oregon, we got in British Columbia, they said, prepare for volcanic activity. It seems that everybody is aligned up here on the West Coast from the emergency officials to step into something is coming type of preparedness level. And this is why you need to stop right now and just hit that subscribe button because we right now as a community have people monitoring Mount Rainier saying rocks are falling they haven't seen before monitoring Mount St. Helens where the volcanic ash happened and saying that stuff is happening they haven't seen before and they're looking at getting you video so you need to stay here as I deliver all of the information about the risk zones and everything else because we will not let you down we're bringing out all the crucial information about the tectonic shift that literally a lot of people are not even paying attention to we need to watch for 4.0 through 5.0 hitting japan or u.s west coast these spikes usually show us that a bigger shift is at play number two if the u.s navy's training is relocated again unusually this could tell us that the shift is moving faster than we even expected communities on the pacific coast from california washington oregon uh, even up to canada areas in alaska they may start running tsunami drills out of nowhere and we're not talking annual drills we're saying they just up and started running tsunami drills as they bumped up their funding this could signal to us as well that a major move is needed for preparation for an oncoming event. Now that was in the coming days. In the coming weeks, we need to look at Cascadia subduction zone. We're gonna watch those tremors and we gotta look at the Bay Area in California to see what occurs as these new quakes start to come. And you can give us videos if you smell sulfur, if you see ash fall out, or if you have these ground rumblings happening that's just really unusual, not something you've been hearing all the time. And that's how we're gonna have this community warning signs for each other so that we can all bring this knowledge in in the comment section, look between it, and then actually see before the authorities give out the final warning that we don't know when we'll get. One of the other big signs is that the Japanese authorities may issue new maps and guidances to the Japanese people. And this will signal to us that they do see something happening either with the rupture and the magma intrusions and along the ring of fire. And this will definitely be a bigger warning sign. But how do you stay updated with all that? You just stay here and subscribe. We, we have all this going for a reason because we want you to be aware. And the other thing is strange animal warning signs. And I still think that it's strange that if we look at this story here that ecologists found out they started migrating on the opposite of what usually is done. And they started breeding during non-breeding season while the other animals was breeding. And they started moving up towards areas like way past the you know, Canada border, which a lot of the birds wasn't doing. It's like they was leaving towards the area where Yellowstone was at, which is interesting because maybe they sent some heat signatures there. Uh, but here's the thing. As the environment shifts, so does the animal shift. That's a proven fact. It's confirmed. That's why we need to really pay attention to that. And if you get some of the information in, send it to me here. And here's the tsunami map for where you need to back up off of this zone. If you, even if you have a few minutes of time, you need to create a plan where you can get out of this yellow and greenish looking zone because that's where most of the inundation from the tsunami is going to be at. And these facilities they want to build is pretty interesting because Jeff Merkley, the senator, asked uh, for the funding, the disaster funding uh, in Oregon to create these facilities when the tsunami and earthquake hit. And how would these facilities be facilitated is the question. This could be another scenario that we need to dive deeper into to see where they're being built, to see how they're being built and to see what we know for a fact who's running them. F E M, and you know what the last letter is. I just don't want to trigger anything. That's why I'm not saying it. Whether you're newly tuning in, whether you've been here for years, we deeply care about you. And at this point that we're at right now, a lot of people have lost sense of reality, but we're here to bring that back once again to bring back the care, the love, respect between communities. 
And we actually want eventually for us to be able to respond as a team, as we're doing on the internet right now, and that we will become that later in person. Because when these things do go down, community can make you or break you. And in 2005, in Hurricane Katrina, during that disaster, I saw the best and worst of humanity. I seen people turn their back on us and drive past us while we had no vehicle, stranded houses in the street, but also saw people come together and help us. Also seen a family cohesive unit, a positive minded support group. And that's what gets you through all this stuff. Not always being in fear, having that positivity, praying. We prayed for like at least five hours in the attic that we didn't have. We broke a hole in. And then seeing the water go down, heard people screaming, heard all the chaos. So people ask, why you do it? This is why I do it. I was 11 years old. I survived that. And obviously we won't survive everything. But the thing is that if you can, then you should try at least. Because you might have a mission to help somebody else in the future that you never knew you could help change. Imagine if I didn't care about surviving then you wouldn't know me now i appreciate every last one of you but for survivability you need to make sure you check out this video because this really give you all the mapped out zones the cascadia don't miss it because they don't want you to see it